Yo, yo, yo! Welcome back to the MMA Short Show. As always, your boy, Steven Mousteris. And guys, at UFC 302, I know it's a few weeks away and everything, but still, I cannot wait to see which side of history that this man, Dustin Poirier, is going to be on. Like, I mean, I can speak for probably most people when it comes to Dustin Poirier. Like, no matter if you hated him when he first started or, you know, maybe just dislike him or maybe you were a Conor fan and you were super happy when Conor knocked him out in 2014 and kind of just launched himself into, like, the next stratosphere. But, you know, no matter what you feel about Dustin Poirier, if you've truly been following the sport forever... The way that this man always just comes back stronger and stronger, and even though he might reach the mountaintop once again or be at the, you know, right at the tip of it, and, you know, he'll lose against the Habib or he'll lose against Charles or he'll get knocked out against Justin Gaethje, but he'll always come back and do the things like we just saw with Benoit Saint Denis or what he did to Dan Hooker or anything that he always does. He always comes out and does the thing. Like, even if he loses some crazy fight against Michael Johnson, he'll come back out and go on one of the craziest runs we've ever seen with beating Eddie Alvarez, going on Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway, you know, putting the absolute runs in and you know even to come back and beat Connor twice and everything we've ever seen Dustin Poirier the man is a fan favorite but when it comes to fan favorites there's a fine line between between being a Chuck Liddell being an Anderson Silva a GSP a John Jones a Max Holloway a Connor McGregor an Israel Adesanya you know any you can name anybody that's ever been a crazy champion and been one of the fan favorites and then there's also the other end where oh okay now you're the Cowboy Cerrone who fights all the time but maybe just never did it you know Joseph Benavidez who was around for forever and might have just never got over that hump. Chael Sonnen, Anthony Rumble Johnson. I mean, you can go on for days. Alexander Gustafson, Jorge Masvidal, the Diaz brothers. I mean, and when it comes to the UFC, you can add even like Dan Henderson in there, Uriah Faber, you, I mean, even Alistar Overeem. Like, you can add all these guys, even though those last three that I named, they, they have won Grand Prix, they have been Pride champions, WEC champions, I mean, King of the Cage champions. Like, these, these guys have done it all, but when it comes to the UFC, they just never were able to capture that that gold and there's a very fine line and when it comes to Dustin Poirier as long as he's been around and whatnot being 35 years old about to be 36 this year he puts himself into one of the craziest categories ever where it could be one of the greatest feel-good moments of all time where these guys go so long their entire career and at the very end become a champion and there's only like two that really really come to mind that stick out and clearly it's the Michael Bisbang when he took out Luke Rockhold and even though I thought Luke Rockhold went in there way too cocky I think it was a week notice whatever Bisbing was talking about how he was drinking on set doing a doing a film doing whatever probably you know the G.I. Joe 57 or whatever he was shooting but he came out and put on one of the craziest moments I've ever seen when he knocked out Luke Rockhold but then you had also you had Glover this year when he took out Jan Blakowicz and you know when it comes to Glover it was awesome and everything to see but when it came to that light heavyweight I mean it wasn't really that stacked at the time and to beat Jan Blakowicz it wasn't like when he fought John Jones and could have won but still amazing feel-good moment and when it comes to this fight with Dustin Poirier and Islam Makachev, like this is 100% would take the cake at number one. Greatest moments of all time when it comes to the last second, maybe ending your career, even if he retires, like... I mean, what's the only good feel good stories we've ever had in retirement? So what, Henry Cejudo, which wasn't really a feel good. I mean, Dana White burned a hole in the back of that man's head because of what he did. I mean, what, GSP retired on top after twice after the, the loss to Johnny Hendricks that even though he won, I think we all thought he lost. And then, of course, beating Bisbang. But still, that was a, it was a good retirement. We weren't mad at that. And what, Amanda Nunes? But like none of these have been like, OK, I've I've reached the mountaintop three times. I've lost. But then I came back, you know, proved everybody wrong and. And to beat Islam Makachev, like I've told you guys, I'm probably, I'm still a believer in Habib. I still think Habib's better than Islam. I think when it comes just to the competitive nature and getting the job done, this man is going to get the job done every single time. Habib isn't going to lose when he sets his mind to it. But when it comes to Islam, I think we can all agree that that man is definitely a more well-rounded fighter version of Habib. And I think when it comes to this, this would be the absolute craziest thing of all time to see Dustin Poirier somehow get it done against Islam Makachev and become champion and whether he retires or keeps going, man, it's this would be one of the most beautiful moments of all time. And the Prudential Center in New Jersey is on Lafayette Street. Like, it just writes the story itself. But with all this being said and saying how good Islam Makachev is, I mean, we just saw how Dustin Poirier handled the whole the grappling with Benoit Saint-Denis. It looked rough. It looked very bad there for a second. We saw how it went with Charles Oliveira. It was rough. We saw how it went with Habib. It was rough. Like, we see how it is. And if Islam Makachev really goes out there and puts the game plan on, like, we know he probably will i mean it could be a quick one and 
that's just where you got to wonder, man, like, oh, man, if he does go out there and lose, if it's not maybe the greatest and most competitive fight and he does go out there and retire, like, how will Dustin Poirier be remembered then? I know I'm hyping it up where he's got the potential to be, wow, one of the greatest moments ever. But at the same time, this has a potential of being, you know, one of the sadder moments of all time. I know there's a lot of huge fans of Dustin Poirier out there. I'm a huge fan of Dustin Poirier out there. Like, I want to know how we're going to remember him. Are we going to remember him with the Joseph Benavidez, the Chael Sonnens? You know, who else do we name? Everybody. Anthony Rumble Johnson, Alexander Gustafson, Derek Lewis, you know, Jorge Maswell. Will he go down as some of these guys? Or will he be remembered maybe a little better light because he was an interim champion? Like, these are just these things that we're going to have to find out here in a month when, when this fight goes down. But, you know, with all this being said, at the same time, if you are a Dustin Poirier fan, when it comes to Islam Makachev, I do think he's willing to strike a little bit more, like we saw with the whole Volkanovsky fight and everything. Like, he's in love with his stri his striking, and I think he knows he wants to go out there and really prove something against Dustin Poirier. So, I mean, that could be one of the only chances Dustin has is if, if Islam lets it stand on the feet and, you know, lets Dustin use some of his old game plans and he, some of his dirty boxing and whatever he's got in there and some of his counters. Like, this could be Dustin Poirier's moment. So, I am very excited to see, but it's just... I'm just really, I'm ready to see what side of history we're going to remember him on. Are we going to remember him as, man, he got a, he got the job done. It's one of the most beautiful moments ever. He brings his wife in, who's been by his side since he first started. When he first started his fight career, he said it on plenty, plenty of occasions that he's the, or she's the only reason he still goes. So, I mean, I'm just saying, that could be one of the most beautiful moments ever, or what we just remember him as, man, he just can never get over that hump and whatnot. So you guys let me know where you'll have that ranked and, you know, maybe who's your favorite, you know, moment of all time, the feel good moment. But as always, your boy, Stephen Moose and I'm excited to see how this plays out, baby.